Now, when Alexandra dies, her two sons, Aristobulus II and John Hyrcanus II, both of them have two civil wars against each other, trying to gain control over the throne of Judea. And these civil wars are only ended with Roman intervention. We are now at the time of Julius Caesar, Pompey, the Triumvirate, and the civil war between Caesar and Pompey. And during this war, Pompey is in Syria. He defeats and conquers Syria, and he gets control over uh, the lands of Judea, and he kind of ends the dispute between these two brothers. And he appoints Hyrcanus II as the ruler because he believes him to be weaker and easier to control. Now, this doesn't actually end pretty. You know, Pompey doesn't just show up and say, well, it's over, and I'm going to put Hyrcanus in charge. Aristobulus tries to fight Pompey and seal himself up inside first the city of Jerusalem, which Pompey promptly sieges and captures. Aristobulus retreats into the temple and the fortress surrounding the temple, and he forces Pompey to besiege the temple. Let me say that again. He forces Pompey to besiege the temple in Jerusalem which Pompey doesn't destroy, but he certainly severely damages and captures, takes it by force, and while Pompey is there, he defiles the sanctuary by going into the holiest of holies, which only the high priest is able to do in order to see what was there. Now, just a few years after this, during the um, civil war between Caesar and Pompey, Mark Antony, Julius Caesar's right-hand man, best bud. Mark Antony is in the area tracking down Pompey. And Mark Antony gets involved in what is potentially another Roman, um, or pardon me, potentially another Maccabean play for control over Judea. And... Mark Antony is convinced by Herod to put himself in charge as the ethnarch and ruler of Judea on behalf of Rome. Herod the first, not Herod the first yet, well now Herod the first, I guess you could say. Herod had already been working studiously for Rome for the previous um, 15 years or so, or 10 years or so dutifully collecting taxes in Syria and in Samaria. Herod is an Idumean. He was born there. Herod marries into the Maccabee family and solidifies his rule over Judea, becoming uh, what's known as Herod the Great. And I'm going to get into this period in uh, next, uh, next episode. But we're going to end here with the establishment of Herod and the end of the Maccabean dynasty. Now, we've just gone through about 180 years of the history of Judea, the city of Jerusalem, the Seleucids, Rome. And I hope you've found some of the characters, the historical people, of the Hasmonean dynasty as fascinating as I have, from uh, Matthias, the father who triggered the Maccabean revolt, to Judas Maccabeus, who led the initial guerrilla warfare, built the army that his brother would take over, his brother Simon, who would kind of solidify Judean independence then we get into what i call the game of thrones period which is john hyrcanus and his heirs aristobulus and um, antigonus alexandra salome who throughout this 
Game of Thrones cutthroat wars for who is going to be the king and head of the Maccabean family, the high priest and king of Jerusalem. Alexandra Salome shows her political chops at playing Aristobulus and Antigonus off each other, who gets to have these two people who seize the throne, gets them to murder each other, gets them to, to die. She seizes power. She's the kingmaker of Alexander Unias. And after Alexander Unias cripples Jerusalem or in, in Judea in the Civil War, and yet at the same time builds the army and lands of Judea as the biggest kingdom it will ever become, and then leaves it all to Alexander Salome, who's able to solidify Judean control and security for her heirs, Hyrcanus and Aristobulus II, who have yet another civil war against each other before Rome steps in and seizes control and flexes their authority over the region. Now, what I didn't talk about was what was happening in the background because I did talk quite a bit about that with uh, Professor Boris Krubasik in my previous episode, is that there are these religious groups trying to, at the same time, negotiate and figure out what it means to be Jewish. These groups called the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, the Zealots. What do these groups mean? Do they mean anything? But we know they're in the background. We know that they're even internally within the Maccabee family. There are Maccabee um, kings who are at times persecuting one group while at the same time forcing the other to be ascendant. Some of the civil wars, especially under Alexander Yanias, we know there was explicitly persecution of at least one of these groups, the Pharisees, of which Alexander Salome makes peace with. We know also the community at Qumran, which is where the famous Dead Sea Scrolls are from. This group at this pot time during this period breaks off, breaks away from the Maccabee family, from Jerusalem, from the high priest and their authority and starts their own community and religious group there independent of Jerusalem. So there is a religious tension happening even all through this period, even as the Maccabee family themselves are vying for control, who's going to be in charge, there is this thing happening in the background of one group becoming ascendant philosophically with what it means to be Jewish, pushing other groups to the side. Now, who who is what? Is, you know, is somebody this group versus this group? That's not necessarily what's important. What's important to understand is that it is happening in the background. Sometimes it is violent. Sometimes it is one of the causes of civil wars, even amongst the Maccabee family or between Maccabee kings and the Judean countryside. Sometimes it's atrocities that trigger civil wars, but this is clearly not a peaceful period. Now, I don't know if you've been keeping track in the background here, but this is 10 separate civil wars, according to my math, in about a 100-year period, give or take. Let me say that again. This is about 10 civil wars in about a 100-year period. Now, 100 years, you know, that's what, four generations, give or take? Ten civil wars in four generations. This is what's been rocking the Judean countryside. This civil war is not only for religious, what it means to be Jewish from a religious perspective, but also there is the rejection of Greek culture, 
Greek material, Greek silverware, pottery, the wa the Greek wine that some of these people loved at the start of my discussion here. By the time of Hera II, there's a lot less of that in the countryside. This is the time that we're coming to as we get to the rule of Herod the Great, the Jesus of Nazareth, his movement, and what will become the tinderbox for the first Jewish Roman revolt. Stay tuned for this in our next episode. Thank you for listening. This has been an episode of the Grimdark History.